Every year on All Saints Sunday, the veil between the living and the dead feels so very thin. Every year on All Saints Sunday, we pause in the busy chaos of our lives and we savor the names of those who have blessed us and taught us and loved us and fought with us and given us life. And every year on All Saints Sunday, I remember to myself, perhaps you do as well, But I remember to myself, even as I put on my robe and my stole, and I prepare for worship, that someday, maybe next year, who knows, but someday, my name will be read at an All Saints Day worship service. Because we know that someday comes for us all. So every All Saints Sunday, I hold to my heart the question that poet Mary Oliver asks. She asks this, tell me, what is it that you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? And every All Saints Sunday, I ask God for the wisdom and the presence of mind and the courage to live the teachings of Jesus in such a way that I leave blessing behind. Blessing for my children, blessing for this world that God has given me to love. So it's no coincidence that the gospel lesson on All Saints Sunday is the most powerful, pivotal sermon that Jesus ever gave, a sermon in which he speaks of the sweetness and the challenge and the poignancy of living blessings. The Sermon on the Mount is a manifesto for discipleship, and the Sermon on the Mount speaks of blessings. Here is what Irish theologian John O'Donohue has to say about blessings. A blessing evokes a sense of warmth, warmth and protection. A blessing suggests that no life is alone or unreachable. Each life is clothed in raiment of spirit that secretly links it to everything else. Through suffering, though suffering and chaos may befall us, they can never quench that inner light of providence. So on this All Saints Sunday, we are invited to lean into the power and the challenge of blessing. Though suffering and chaos befall us each, the light of God's providence is never extinguished. So in sharing the Beatitudes, Jesus shares a vision for how it is we are connected one with the other, and he shares a vision for what it is for us to actually live our love for God and our neighbor. The first blessings of the nine have to do with the grounding of our characters in honorable ways, blessings like humility and meekness and the willingness to feel our own pain and the pain of the world, blessings like a purity of heart, an intentional ordering of our hearts in order that we might apprehend and live the good. And the rest of the blessings deal with how we live and pay attention to the ways that blessings are meant not to be hoarded, but to be shared by all people in God's world. Jesus speaks in the Beatitudes of living acts of mercy and of peace and of justice. And United Methodist followers of Jesus feel so strongly about the both and of living love for God and living with love in our na- with our neighbors, with that love being evidenced in how we live in community, that our book of discipline says this, says, we proclaim no personal gospel that fails to express itself in relevant social concerns. 
And we proclaim no social gospel that does not include the personal transformation of sinners. It's the both and. The discipline goes on to say, it is our conviction that the good news of the kingdom must judge and must redeem and must reform the sinful social structures of our time. So as you hear this stunning sermon preached by our brother Jesus long ago, please allow yourselves to be invited to consider how his words and the heart of Jesus and the challenge of Jesus are meant to light our souls as we live in this world that we so powerfully love and also. I invite you to hear these words as comfort and vision as they might be shared at a funeral service because many of the names we say on this day are people who died after the pandemic hit. And so their families were not able to gather for worship and storytelling and hugs and bunny cake and the outpouring of grief and gratitude that funerals provide. We have been without that coming together, that being able to mark immense changes in life and immense gratitude for blessing. So hear these words as though they were being shared at a funeral service because we haven't been able to fully name the blessing of those who have died in the previous year. So we share this word from the Gospel of Matthew with a sense of poignant loss and a sense of celebration, both. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. And then Jesus began to speak, and he taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way, they persecuted the prophets who were before you. May God add a blessing to the reading of that word. We, you and I, this nation, we are living in a time of indrawn breath. This election on Tuesday has revealed so much in this nation of ours that is not blessing. We are a nation who know well the grief of dreams that have been savaged by fear. And fear makes us feel alone and unreachable, and that is not God's vision for this world. Here's the thing. On this day, 
We light candles and we speak the names of those who live in our hearts who are no longer touchable. On this day, we hold to our attention the ways that we each want to truly and fully and courageously and intentionally live our wild and precious lives. On this day, we wrap our hearts in the teachings of our beloved Jesus Christ. We so long to be a people of blessing. We want to know and we want to live in such a way that we proclaim that not a one of us is distinct from the other. To be a people of blessing is to know that living in righteousness, living in right relationship with our God who shaped and formed and loved us is to live the justice and the ethical teachings of our God, which is this, we are called to care for the poor and for the vulnerable. We are called to address and fight against systems that imprison any one of us. We are called to preach the good news of Jesus Christ with all of our lives. So as you vote and as you live into the anxiety of this time and into the anxiety of not exactly knowing the results of this election for longer than we would like, here is what I ask. Here is what I pray. Remember who you are. You are a Christian. You are a blessing. You are a child of the Most High God. And the ancestors, they are with us. Thanks be to God. Amen.